I cancel the assignment right now. I cancel the assignment right now. Yes, God, yes, God, yes, God, yes, God. Yes, God, yes, God, yes, God. Yes, God. This is what God, right there, Rod. This is what God desires from us. Why does God desire this from us? And I want you to hear your pastor. Because there is a spiritual divine coronation that's about to take place. I don't think you heard what I just said. There's a coronation that's about to take place. The Lord speaks to Samuel and says, I'm ready for a new king. He says, I want you to go to Jesse's house because the king is in the house. Now here's what's crazy, Rock City. He does not say that the king is David. You would think God would have said, go to Jesse's house. His son David is the new king. All the Lord says is, go to Jesse's house. I'm going to catch five of y'all. The king is in the house. I, I hope you catch this. I hope you catch this. I want to prophesy that what God is getting ready to do in the earth, he's going to do it through somebody in this house. Whether you're here physically or digitally, God said the next time you shout, I want you to shout like he's about to anoint you because you're in the house. Samuel gets word that the next king is in the house. Here's what's crazy, because I want to show you the confusion that the devil tries to do with you. Jason, it says the next king is in the house. Here's what's crazy, Jason. When Samuel shows up to the house, David is in the field. So we can look at this two ways. Yes, he was in the our house figuratively, but he was out of the house literally. And many times the devil tries to make you believe because you're not in the proper physical position. You're gonna miss the anointing that's on your life. But God said even when you was out of the house, you were still in the house. I don't want you to shout if you've been perfect your whole life. But if you ever had a season where you were out of the house, the reason I'm still alive is because although I was out of the house, I was still in the house. Still in the house. This is why, this is why, this is why even when you run from God, you can't run from God. B, that's crazy. Even when you run from God, you can't run from God. God says, the next king is in the house. Here's what I need you to do. Go to Jesse's house. And Samuel gets to Jesse's house and Samuel goes through protocol. He goes up to Jesse and says, hey, the Lord told me the next king is in your house. Let me see your sons. The problem I have with that particular scripture is that Jesse calls everyone he likes. That's for seven of y'all who keep feeling like if you don't get in the right circle, certain stuff ain't gonna happen. Or certain people you keep tolerating because you feel like you need them where you're going. I don't know who this is for. The Lord told me to tell you. They don't have to like you. I picked you. 
God says, when I want to get something to you, I will go around who's trying to exclude you. Watch this. And here's the danger. Even sometimes, here's the danger. Sometimes when you're invited, you're still not welcome. I don't think you heard what I just said. Sometimes, even though you're invited, you're not welcome. This is for those of you that your favor is undeniable. So they invite you because they have to. But when you get there, you still don't feel. <laughs> Hear me. I like this particular story. Because maturity and age makes me look at scriptures differently. See, when I was younger, Tez, I would hate on Jesse and say, how he do David like that? Now that I'm approaching 40, I appreciate it. I appreciate Jesse for not inviting David. Because at least he didn't fake. At least he didn't give me a sympathy invite. He says, I got these sons. And they begin to look at each son. And he says, nah. Nah, nah. And can't you see Jesse politicking? Have you seen my oldest? Look at him, boy. That's my oldest right there. No, that ain't him. Well, well, well don't, don't leave. Don't leave. What about this one? Right? He's always been handsome. The girls couldn't get enough. But that ain't him. What? What is the one? He's the smartest one. He handles all the money. That that ain't him. Wait, 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 wait. This one right here is the best hunter in the whole city. That ain't him. That ain't him. Here's what's crazy. David is in the field working. I'm sorry, serving. They sleep. I'm appreciating y'all. David's in the field. Oh my Lord. Here it is. Minding his own business. I don't think y'all caught that. David is minding his own business. Hope you catch this. Tez, I, I, I ain't had you all, come here Tez, I, I ain't had you all, all pandemic. We, we had Tez all pandemic. So, 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 so David, you out here working. Kurt, why David over there working. Samuel out here with Jesse examining people. Uh, hope you catch this. David doesn't have a clue. That while a selection is taking place. Because he's too busy minding his own business. Some of the misery you got right now is because you in stuff that you shouldn't even be in. Some of your frustration, I just feel like I'm behind schedule because you're too busy looking at what God doing in other people's life. For the next 120 days, mind your own business. I want to speak by faith. You will be happier with where you live if you mind your own business. Your relationship ain't even as bad as you think it is. But if you would just mind your own business. Jesus teaches this principle. He says, where you been? I must be about my father's. That's my assignment. Did you catch that? And Samuel says, is there anybody else? And then Jesse said, I got another son out there, but <laughs> he, he, it, 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 <laughs> it can't be him. It, 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 it can't be. Half of the frustration people have with you, it's not about what you did. They still having a hard time processing the fact that you did it. Look at your neighbor and say, it's not the what. It's the who that's driving them crazy. So watch this. He says, Jesse, if you don't mind, can you go, can, can y'all go get them? Here's, here's, and stop right there for me, Curtis. Here's where I have questions in the Bible. Because it does not tell me how long it took for David to get there. Was it two minutes? 
was it four minutes? If he's pasturing and tending to the sheep, what if one of the sheep went missing and he couldn't come in until he found it? See, here, here's my frustration. Because he says, go get him. Hope you catch this. And now everybody who was invited is waiting. I hope you catch this. And only seven of y'all going to catch this. Why are you rushing? It can't get started till you show up. I, I don't know who I'm preaching to. Stop letting people put unnecessary pressure on you. When I get there, I'm going to get there. And what happens is, David comes. And Samuel says, this the one. Watch this. And he anoints him. Now, now here's what's crazy. I hope you catch this. He anoints him. Now, I want you to see this. I want you to hold that. He looks at every other son. He says, that's not it. Watch this. The oil has a way to find himself to the anointed. Hope you catch this because I want to show you the difference. When daddy said you, all you got was affirmation. When the prophet said you, you got anointing. And what I'm trying to submit to you is the reason some of us don't walk bold in our call is because all you've had to this point was affirmation. Hope you catch this. God says this is the season you get the oil. I don't know who I'm preaching to. See, if this was an old school church, the church would have went crazy. Because the new school church only shout for houses and cars and weddings and money. But I came to preach to somebody who can say, God, give me the oil. I want the anointing of God. I'm giving you 60 seconds. Can we worship God for the oil? Woo! It's the oil. He says, and he anoints him. Now, this is how we tend to anoint here. But more so, it was a drip of oil. He would just anoint his head. And I need you to catch this right here. Because what happens is, this is why many of us are stuck. I want to pay attention. We don't know the exact age. Somewhere between 10 and 18, this happens. I want to paint this picture. Between 10 and 18, he gets anointed. Here's one finna lose the whole church. Y'all ready? I want to lay my hands on you and anoint you. You are the next king. What God is going to do in your life is going to be incredible. What eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. Get ready to rule. Get ready to reign. Watch this. Now go back to the field. Y'all missed that. Y'all missed that. Because he, if he just anointed me king, wear my crown. But God says, I anoint you in one season. Help me, God. Help me, God. You want to know what some of my greatest frustrations have been? The years of my life where I was anointed in private. Y'all missed that. That was a cold statement. Watch this. He's anointed king in private. Bruh, he's anointed king in private. This is the equivalent of you going to work and your supervisor picking everybody for the promotion but you. Then the owner walks in and says, who is that right there? Then the owner calls you into a room. Watch this. Watch this. Calls you into a room. You got to watch this. With your current boss and your current employees. Looks at you and says, this who's going to own the company next. But then you have to go back working for them. Watch this. Watch this. Why would God anoint David in private? I believe he anointed David in private because he had to make sure David didn't have Saul's issue. D. Saul was wrestling with what? Insecurity and pride. So God said to make sure this next king don't look like him. Watch this. 
I'm going to give him everything but not let him have it. I'm going to tell him it's his and see if he can serve like it ain't. Watch, watch this. What if he wanted to see if David was going to be walking around like, I ain't going back out there to the field. Do you know who I am? David, we need you to go out there with the sheep. Let one of my other brothers do it or you ain't going to have a place in my future kingdom. Can I ask you a question? What if you keep pushing your manifestation back because of how you acting before it show up? He's anointed in private. That's between 10 and 18. By 30, he gets the throne. So let's just say it happens at 15. 15 years later. Now, you're not going to say amen when I say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. I'm only preaching to those of you who've been carrying this word God gave you around and it still ain't manifest yet. He's giving you glimpses. You want to know what's crazy? And Pastor D, we're going to have to break this down one day and do a whole teaching on this. Because God tells him he's the king. Tell him he's next. Then he becomes friends with the king's son. Then he has to live watching the current king throw stuff at him. Can you imagine being in the palace, looking at the throne, and the current king don't like you? But you know in your heart, it's me. But I can't necessarily say it's me. Because if I say it's me, they're going to kill me and everybody connected to me. See, this is why your family and your circle should treat you better. Because if they realize half of the hell you took to protect them. I don't think they caught that. Half of the hell. Because we see a principle. You remember Mephibosheth? When, when, when the next king took over, he killed everybody in the family. Mephibosheth became crippled because his nanny was running and she dropped him. Which means, had Saul found out it was David, David's whole family would have been killed. Why is that important, PMJ? Because if David gets killed, his lineage dies. I don't think y'all see where I'm trying to go with this. And through his lineage, you get Jesus. Hope you catch this. Had David dealt with insecurity, he would have opened his mouth too soon cost him his life, cost us our Christ. I need you to check your pride this week because you're so busy trying to let people know that they can't get over on you and don't even realize you're killing an opportunity for who's coming behind you. Michael! And David is anointed but serving. Goliath rose up and he's a fighter. Saul has an issue. He's a worshiper. Can I free you real quickly? We don't begin to really see character flaws in David until he becomes king. Y'all miss what I just said. We really don't see character flaws in David until he becomes king. How do you have the humility to carry around all that and still not walk in pride. Then when he becomes king, he's on his balcony and his issue rises up. I hope you catch this real soft, right? Holy Spirit told me that a lot of our problems happen when we become dormant. As long as he had an assignment and he was serving, he was walking in his integrity. When he became complacent, and had no assignment. That's 
when his demons began to show up. Mind your business. Watch this. But don't stop being busy for him. And I'm here today to tell you this, and this wasn't my message, but again, God just keep moving when we get in the room. I want you to hear me when I say this. To those in this room and to those of you who are watching right now, God has sent me here today to speak specifically to those of you who have been wrestling with purpose and the call of God on your life. And God told me to tell you, I have not forgotten about you. Hear me. Just because you are impatient does not mean I'm about to speed up the process. Hear me when I say this. What I told you I was going to do, I am still going to do it. But I will not respond to your immaturity. (laughs) Hear me when I say this. And God says, from this day forward, Walk like you know what he called you. In church, Jason, th- this is why no matter how successful your business become, you're going to feel voids. Whole city can come to your shop, you're going to feel a void. Because with every head you cut, that's going to bring a dollar. But there's a greater assignment on your life. That's why money, there are certain voids money not going to fill. Hear me when I say this. Some of you have accomplished a lot of things in your life and you're still accomplishing things, yet you still feel like, because God is saying, I'm happy. Help me, let me help you. I allowed you to be successful, watch this, before you walked in it. Because had I gave you the call, I want to say this better, had I gave you the boldness you need to walk in your call before you became successful, you would have been walking in your call in anonymity. Do I need to say that better? Had I gave you the boldness to be who I called you before you became successful, You would have been bold but unknown. You would have been ready to shepherd with no pasture. He said, so I needed you to become successful first. So now that they know you at that place of employment, at your job, do it for the culture. Now that you're known as a successful businessman, businesswoman, now that people come to you for financial advice, In the middle of showing them how to get their money right, pause and do it for the culture. Now that your shop is the most popular shopping warrior, every time somebody sit in your chair, you get a chance to do it. Hey, how how everything going with you and the fam? Man, they tripping, man. I've been there, man, but you got to know that God, he got a plan for you, bro. And and, and I want to be very clear, man. He... I don't need this. This is a filling station. Rock City Church is a charger. Once a week, plug in. Once you get full, go ye there for and do it. For the culture. For the culture. Father, I pray for every person under the sound of my voice. I pray for the boldness to walk fully in the call that you've called them to do. God, so many of them are pregnant with vision. They're pregnant with ideas. 
they're pregnant with a sound. They are pregnant with, with, with these lofty dreams and goals. And God, it's hard sometimes because sometimes the resources don't match or the connections don't match or it feels like the timing ain't right or they don't have the help they need to make it move. God, I speak by faith. They won't abort the assignment because of what it looks like right now. God, I pray that you give them a holy boldness that's different than confidence, that is different than arrogance. It is this divine conviction that he who has begun a good work shall perfect that thing. So, so God, it, it, it is with humility, it, it is with somewhat of a, a, a reverence. That word reverence comes from the Greek word adorare, which means to adore. So God, it's not a fear but it's a holy reverence that I understand the weight of this assignment. That my assignment is not to just preach to thousands of people. My assignment is not to gather thousands of people. God, my assignment is to ignite. Because God, if I could stir up the gift and the people who are listening to me, they can change lives and the people that are connected to them. So then God stir up the gift God let us stop putting more value on the gifts that are visible God let us stop putting more value on the gifts that are visible let us stop putting more value on the gifts that are visible God, I pray right now for that mother who has put a lot on hold because of the assignments and responsibilities. I speak fresh wind. I pray right now, God, that you'll begin to give her opportunities to see her dream manifest, her dream come into fruition. I pray for that man, God, who, who at this point in his life, he just feels like there's more. And sometimes his current circle doesn't reflect what he's desiring to do. I pray right now that you would give him the strength to be what you called him to be. I pray for that young girl who knows in her heart she's different. And she wants to fit in, but she also understands that there's something greater that you called her to be. So in this moment, God, I ask that you would give her a peace about her unique call. I pray that you will help her to understand her worth and her value. That she will never lay her value down on the altar of acceptance. God, I pray for that young man who's cool and trying to find his way in life. But he was raised right. His mother prayed over him. He got word in his heart. So there's always this tension between what he wants to do and what he knows to do. I pray, God, that you would give him the conviction to just be who you called him to be. Now, God, I pray a special prayer for the person listening who don't know you. Some kind of way they ended up on this stream and they don't know Jesus. Right now, in this moment, God, I pray that they could text home to 28950 so we can pray with them. I pray right now that wherever they are, they could just confess with their mouth, believe with their heart that you rose from the dead with all power in your hand. God, as we prepare for Easter, that we don't need church as usual. We don't need two songs and a message. We need a visitation from you. So God, I thank you for how you're interrupting what we're planning. I thank you, God, how you're disrupting our services. Because if it was up to us, we would stick to the script. I thank you, God, for visiting us. I thank you, God, that every week, God, we're getting people calling us saying from Milwaukee, we can feel the presence of God. From California, we can feel the presence of God. So, God, my prayer today is that even if you give us new buildings, even if you give us more equipment, even if you give us better songs, don't take your presence from us. Don't take your presence from us. God, I thank Thank you for what you're doing, not just in this church, 
but in the homes of those who frequent this church. God, we do not desire to be a big church. We desire to be a healthy church that builds big people. And God, if we can continue to build big people, I speak and prophesy millionaire spiritual entrepreneurs are in this church. I decree and declare that successful business women and men are in this church. I decree and declare that godly parents are in this church. I decree and declare that whatever field that they walk into, they are successful because they are there on assignment. They are double agents. That they are there to get their check, but they are also there to get somebody out of a dark place. And for that reason, God, I thank you in advance for what you're doing. I see you in the future. And you look a whole lot better than what you do right now. It is in Jesus' name. Can you praise God for your future? Praise God for your tomorrow. Praise God for what he's getting ready to do. Hear me. There is a unique call on our church in this season. I believe this. From, if I never believed it, I believe it now. It feels like the more, Corey, the more I try my best, to to plan and structure when I tell you we've been planning all week and structuring and some of y'all know we got here at 8 30 this morning and ran through the whole service because we wanted to be perfect we need this to come and God keeps saying get out of my way God keeps saying get out of my way It's because, and hear me when I say this, I, I get chills when I think about it. it, it it's almost as if we're tilling the ground. There's something, brother, there's something so special God's about to birth in you. And God is saying, no, no, church as usual and the plan and all this stuff that you think you know that I think I want. He says, if you just come and submit and let me move. I heard one scripture say, my ways are not your ways and my thoughts. So I want to say this, and I mean this, and I rarely say this. I rarely say this. I rarely, rarely, rarely say this. I rarely, rarely say this. I rarely, rarely say this. I rarely, 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 rarely say this. You have to be with me now. I'm going to say 10 plus years. You can probably count on your hands the amount of times I have said, God said to me. Hear me when I say this. I have heard the Lord and the Lord has said to me, this is where I want you. And I want you to hear me very clearly when I say this. Hear me very clearly when I say this. He's moving at the speed of your obedience. Hear me plans that you're planning he's about to wreck I rarely say God said I rarely say God told me I am hearing the Lord very clearly in this moment and I want you to record what I'm saying God is saying I am about to wreck your plans I am about to put some delays in front of you I am about to send you some no's He says, because I have favored you so much that I now have to protect you from you. I don't think you heard what I just said. I have to protect you from you. I gave you a window to make the right decisions, but I've also favored whatever your hand touches. He says, so in this season, I am doing what I must to protect you from you hear me when I say this I speak and declare there will be mass repentance that there will be those who come back into your life and all they can say is I'm sorry I missed it I messed up God's about to give you glimpses and he's about to start placing conviction in your heart that you are headed in the wrong direction and God says and I rarely say that God says in this season I am doing what I must to protect you from you. Hear the word of the Lord. 
Can you clap your hands and tell God thank you right there? Woo. I felt that. I felt that. Mm. That's a hard word right there. That's a hard word. That's a hard word. That's a hard word right there. God, from the pulpit to the pew, give us the strength to stop forcing it. Give us the strength. Wow. Mm. That's a hard word right there. That's a hard word right there. Mm. Mm. Give us the strength to stop forcing it. Were you blessed today, church? Man, wow. Hear me. I, I mean this from the bottom of my heart, man. We're living in a pivotal time where are some things that God is desiring from you and some things that God is trying to call you forth to. And you really have to hear from God in this season. And, and I don't want to over-explain what I just heard from God. I don't want to over-explain what I just heard from God. It's almost a picture of Miles always. I gave Miles a ginger ale, and now all he wants is gin. He just, he's addicted to him now. Just, can I get another one? Can I get another one? And, and yesterday I told him, nothing but water today. So he's been crying all day yesterday. He was like, but Dad, I said, nothing but water. And, and when I said that, it's like I saw me as Miles saying to God, but, but I'm doing that for you. You think you're doing it for me. No, that's what you've told yourself to validate your reason for wanting it. So you tell yourself, I'm doing this because God called me to do it. When God said, I didn't call you to do that. No, now you're doing it because you desire to do it. So I need you to hear me when I say this. This is why I need every person listening to your pastor. I want you to spend some time this week revisiting what you are about to chase. Is that not good, Pastor Kurt? I want you to revisit what you are about to pursue. So I want to be very clear. To pursue something that God has not ordained is to put you in opposition of God. That's heavy. So, so hear me when I say this. To pursue a job that God has not called you to pursue puts you in opposition of him. Therefore, his love for you demands he block or he attacks you. Okay, that doesn't make sense. Help me, God. I'm trying to stop. Help me, God. Come here, Job. Come here, Job, who goes the wrong way. God sends an entire storm. Listen to your pastor. Everybody on the boat caught hell because one person was going the wrong way. Evaluate your circle. Evaluate your close friends and say, I love you, but in this particular season, we got to go the right way. It's too much on my boat to lose because one of us running in the wrong direction. Am I preaching to anybody? I'm going to stop right there. Listen to me. I'm excited. That's heavy. That's heavy right there, boy. I come from one of them old school churches, Miss Melva, where we had presbytery. And, and, and they would stand up and prophesy and speak words. And, and, and it's, it's, you can just feel God and so heavy on this moment. Um, I'm going to move. I'm excited about Resurrection Weekend. Can we clap for Easter weekend? I mean this. Woo. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. So I'm excited about what God is doing. I want to walk through this real slowly if you're watching me. That Friday, that Friday is I Got It Friday. And you're going to be hearing us say more about this. I want random acts of kindness throughout this city. Now, I'll tell our church what I plan on doing. Uh, it's probably going to be, I can't not tell the church. It's probably going to be probably... Well, I, I'm not going to tell the church, but we're going to be blessing throughout the city in different places, doing a lot of stuff. But here's what I want from you. 
I want you to just make up in your mind. This is the beautiful thing about being a blessing. You don't have to go out your way. So hear me when I say this. I believe next Sunday, uh, when you come in here next Sunday, or if you're watching online, do me a favor. If you're watching online, this week we're going to send a link out where you can print something off. It's going to be a I got it card, uh, and it's going to have information about the church. You can print that off digitally, all of that, if you're out the country, out the state, wherever you are. But let's just say you're at a restaurant. I just want you to bless somebody food or be kind to somebody and love on some people. Do whatever you got to do. Let your nieces spend the night and just tell them, hey, auntie got you. Auntie got you. A pizza party or something like that. I want you to be a blessing. Our church is going to be doing some special things all over the city at different establishments and blessing people. We may be at a grocery store here and there, and every person who comes through the checkout line will be there um, just paying for their grocery. Look at you like, which, which, grocery, which grocery store? You know, we're going to be doing stuff like that. We may shut down three or four gas stations and be at the pumps just blessing random people. See, here's where I want you to understand where your pastor's kind of growing. Everything doesn't have to be marketed. Or, or publicized or hey here's what we're doing let the work I've done speak for me man so that's where we are that Saturday at it does anybody live on 280 out here a tour of Hoover 280 but listen that Saturday I want you to come the Lord's been really dealing with my heart many of you can remember before the pandemic took off the Lord had laid on my heart uh, to go tour Hoover uh, one thing I want you to realize is you never see and I want to challenge your thinking you never see a nice African-American church on a nice side of town. You only see black churches in the hood. Really think about that. Think about that. And I heard the Lord call me that way before the pandemic happened. So that Saturday, Rock City 280 at the Doubletree Colonnade, uh, I'm super excited about that. Those of you who live in Hoover 280, out that way, Vestavia, do your pastor a favor, come show up. Those of you who don't even live that way, just so I'm not in there by myself, just show up anyway. Show up anyway. Just come. And I want you to look 280. You're like, hey, how you doing? We still have 280. It's Rock City 280. No, I'm just messing with you, man, from the bottom of my heart. Uh, God laid that on my heart. Also, and they're going to talk more about this, that same Saturday, I think around 2 p.m. here at this campus, we're going to have a lot of stuff for the kids. If I'm not mistaken, they may have horses. It's all type of foolishness out here. Kids can ride the horse and do different things. Many of you know this. I love preaching to the babies myself that day, and I'm going to perform to the babies myself that day. So we'll be able to bring the kids in here, and I'm going to do my own little concert with the kids, and I'm going to preach to them. Here's the thing. If you're the pastor of the church, you're the baby's pastors too. So they need to hear from their pastor. Also, I'm calling an audible on the spot. If you've had a baby during the pandemic, like while you was quarantined, you was doing all type of stuff in your quarantine. And in, in some kind of way, a baby came out the quarantine. Who am I preaching to? Throw your hand up if I'm preaching. See, look at you right there. You quarantine having a good time. Like we got it in at the quarantine. Listen, if that's you and your baby hasn't been dedicated, do me a favor. That day, we're going to do dedications for your child. You don't have to sign up. You don't have to register. I just want you to come that day. You'll hear more about it. And I want to say this, though, we're going to have some certificates there, and I may have somebody just write the name in that day or let you write your baby name in that day. But it's a lot of stuff we got to catch back up on because of this pandemic. So listen, so that Saturday, we'll be at Rock City 280 at 11 a.m. At 2 p.m., it'll be all type of stuff in the field, Easter egg hunts for your babies, food, all that. I'll be performing right here for the babies. They may have glow sticks and all type of crazy stuff for them. It's going to be bananas. We'll do a couple baby dedications. I'll give them a word. Then that Sunday at 9 a.m., one of my old school 9 a.m. saints who used to come to 9 a.m. That was the best service every week to me. That 9 a.m. will be right here at 9 a.m. I want you to come and be on time. We're going to have a great service. Then at 11 a.m., we'll be downtown in the Sheraton Ballroom. Sheraton Ballroom, I explained to you last week as we prepare for the World Games, uh, and I'm an ambassador for the World Games this year. Every establishment is working hard. You may see freeways being tore up now because they're trying to get everything ready. The whole world will be watching Birmingham, Alabama, and I'm excited about that, man. So we couldn't use the Boutwell. If you go to the Boutwell, they've snatched all this, a lot of the seats out up in the upper tier. Uh, so they're renovating there. So we're going to go to the Sheraton Downtown Ballroom uh, at 11 a.m. That's going to be a powerful event. 
and we're just going to keep blessing God. Is that all right with you? Also, it was something else I was supposed to say, but I can't remember. Uh, Today is Pathway to Purpose, uh, and it's the final one. So if you want to be a part of ministry, uh, I think there's a lower third for that. Is there a lower third for that? You can text. You can text HOME to 28950 if you want to serve serve in ministries at the church. Let me say it again, Pastor Darius. Even if you're online and you want to serve, we have ways for you to get involved that way. Easter weekend, I really need your help. I need all of you to say, Pastor Mike, I want to serve in some capacity because if we're going to shut down two or three grocery stores and be a blessing, we need your help. We have some nice little cool shirts. I don't know if they got the pictures of those shirts. We have some nice little serve shirts that we're going to be giving you. That way you can just get you a little free Rock City serve shirt and come serve. Don't do like the last group did. They came, got their shirt, and then just left. I'm like, hey, where you going? I'll see y'all tomorrow. Like, no, bring me my shirt back. I'm repoing shirts this year, miss. And God said, do me a favor, get, get that shirt. She didn't come. So hear me right here, man. So listen, I need your help. We're going to be shutting down grocery stores, probably three or four gas stations. We're going to be a blessing to a lot of people, and I really need your help. I want this city to see not only do we do big events, but we give big in our serving. And that matters so much to me. Were you blessed today? Come on, stand to your feet with me. Stand to your feet with me. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now your will. Nothing more, nothing less, nothing else. I pray this is a blessed week. I pray, God, that we heed to the word of the Lord. God, I hear my spirit for somebody who's watching me right now. The word, stay put. Stay put. I'm not done. There's more to come. Get ready for what he's doing in your life. It's in Jesus' name we pray, and everybody said amen. God bless you. We'll be right back here Sunday. I can't wait to see you. Clap your hand. Come on, take us out, Rod. Take us out, Rod. Yeah, yeah. what a powerful service. Incredible. Incredible life change. When I say life change. Yes, sir. God moved like only he can. Yes, sir. You know, we had our script. We had our agenda. Yeah. We left room for the Holy Spirit to do what he wanted to do, and that's what happened. Man, listen, absolutely incredible. Listen, if you've been a part of this experience, and you want to give your life to Christ, maybe you say, you know what, I heard that message, yeah. the prophecy, the, the intensity, the Woo. praise, the worship, yes. and I want to make my next move my best move. You can text HOME to 28950. We cannot wait Woo. to welcome you. And as a part of our spiritual family Absolutely. right here at Rock City. Pastor Mike said something that grabbed my attention. He was talking about David and how David had to yes. overcome and make sure he didn't fall victim to some of the same things that Saul did. Yeah. He said if David had been insecure, yeah. he would have lost his life yes. and we would have lost our Christ. Yes, and I thought that was so good, man, because so many times when we're struggling with certain things and trying to figure things out, yeah. We think it's only about us, us, and we have no idea that God behind. really wants to use us <laughs> to set some stuff up for the people that are coming behind us, man. Somebody just go in the comment section and just say, I received that. That was my word. That. Do it for the culture. It's yes, not just sir. about doing it for you right now, but what's coming behind you. He said something that also was so good in that he says, don't feel frustrated or don't yeah. feel like you're in have to be in a hurry yes sir because it's not gonna happen until you show up yeah that the party don't get started until come on you now get there. and that's church <laughs> so it was so good because david wasn't there and he says pastor mike said he don't know how long we took david to get there yeah. two minutes four minutes a couple of hours but anyway everybody waited because yeah. it didn't get started until david showed listen up. if my grandmother was here she would say <laughs> what god has for you yeah it is for you. I receive that. Man, incredible, incredible experience, man. Yeah, worship. Oh, I'm, my Man, goodness. shout out to Sound of the Rock Woo! just ushering us into the presence of God, man. Absolutely. I experienced team. Absolutely, absolutely incredible, man. I'm still... I'm up here, man. <laughs> it's taking a minute for me to come down. It's taking a minute. You know, shout out to Pastor Curtis Glenn, uh, the entire team, Rod, Pastor Amanda, yeah. Pastor everybody at work. We, you know, I love the the way our worship flows because it's it leaves room for the Holy Spirit yes, to just sir. come in. And the Absolutely. way the manifest present, the tangible, if you could feel it at home, I'm sure you could. We, yeah. we could feel it in the room. The presence of God was here. And when God shows up, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. There was freedom in the room. Yeah. And I felt so many chains being broken and lives being changed. Man, listen, it's so much exciting things happening here at Rock City. Yes. We're going to try to 
give you a quick rundown of some of them. Uh, let's start with this. Let, let's celebrate for a second uh, Elder Tiffany, who had her first flipping uh, right. event yesterday, flipping man, the flipping female. female. She's flipping properties and, and people. people. I like that. Absolutely <laughs> incredible, man. The room was filled. She even had people online. Yeah. And I think that's so incredible how uh, not only is she saying, hey, listen, this is something that I've had success with, yeah. but I also want to do it for the culture. Yeah, for the culture, yeah. And I want to pay this forward to teach other people how they can have some of the same success that I've had as well. So shout out That's good. to you, Elder Tiffany, yes, man. Yes, I'm excited about all the things that are coming next uh, with the flipping female, man. Seven absolutely. properties, man. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. So we got that. Yes. All right. Uh, we also uh, have, okay, I forgot about uh, Andre Rudolph, our Praise media report. director. Many of you guys remember uh, about six weeks ago or so, we started praying for Dre's mom, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, she was having some health issues, some health impl uh, complications. Yeah. We started praying for Dre's mom, and I'm excited about this. And in the Ooh. comment section, the people who are left over in the room, <laughs> we can give God praise. Yes. Because this Friday, Dre's mother was at home. At home. In Hallelujah. her own living room with Hallelujah. her children. Hallelujah. Praise Absolutely God. amazing. Yeah, that's a real praise report. We prayed, we agreed. There's power in agreement. And yep. that had, I believe that had been since December. Yeah. So to get that praise report, to get that news was something. See, you can't, you're not, you got to be able to shout for what God is doing in somebody else's life. Absolutely. And their family. So we love our brother Dre. He works tirelessly. Yes, sir. Sacrifices. Yep. And God has rewarded him. Mama is home. Yeah. And I really want to give a shout out to, to Dre, man, just for Continue to work so diligently in the ministry. Incredible yeah. husband, incredible yes. father. Uh, also standing up, man, going up to the hospital, checking in on mom. So, man, listen, shout out to you, Dre, man. And I believe, I'm going to go ahead and release this over somebody's life right Come now, on. that your prayer requests are about to turn into some praise, praise reports. Report. I receive In that. Jesus' name. <laughs> All right, so then we can't forget oh my goodness. because we're, we are inching up to where we're, we're climbing Go up to, closer to the big weekend. Resurrection Woo! Weekend, Easter, right here oh at Rock City. Are you excited about I'm it? I'm so excited because yes, it's going to be a great weekend. Of course, every Easter, every Resurrection Weekend is powerful. Yeah. Uh, he got up as yes, another Come on by now. himself. But because Hold on, how don't do that. <laughs> don't wait, because, don't do that. <laughs> but because don't, that, don't you know, we can start early, but because yes, he sir. gave. Because he gave, we're going to give Friday. Friday yes, is I Got It Friday. Absolutely. And to see how we're going to be able to be a blessing. All of us, you yep. watching, everybody here, it's I Got It Friday where we can bless other people. Yep, even if it's just one person buying a Starbucks, buying some coffee, yep. buying someone's groceries, however you can do it, or just an encouraging word. That Friday, good Friday, Absolutely. it's going to be a great Friday I, for I Got It Friday. I love what PMJ said toward the end of, of the message when he talked about when you, when you bless people, you don't even have to go out of your way to do that. That's good. Wherever you're going that day, you'll encounter somebody that you'll be able to say, you know what, stop, I got it. And so what we're going to do for you guys is, is that you'll have a link that we'll send out. It'll be available on our website and our app where you'll be able to download these small little I got it cards yeah. and you'll just give that to somebody. Maybe you are at Starbucks, man. Yes. Maybe you're getting gas at the grocery store, whatever it may be. You can just stop somebody and say really quickly, listen, I want to be a blessing. Yep. God laid you on my heart. I got it. Yep. I want to bless you today. I think that's going to be incredible. We're going to be doing that across the Birmingham metropolitan area. Wherever yep. you are around the world, you'll be able to join in as a part of that as well. Yes. So we got, I got a Friday. All right. Now, Saturday. Saturday. Then we got, first of all, we got the 11 a.m. 11 a.m. 11 a.m. service. Absolutely. It's be happening on 280. Yes, sir. 280. We can't wait. So the first service, 11 a.m., we're going to be right there. That's going to be powerful. It's yes, gonna sir. It's going to be amazing. And then at 2 p.m. At 2 p.m., just added, we're doing something special for the Great. kids. Yeah. For all of our youth. It's going to be amazing. Pastor Mike uh, did this, I think, back in 2019, which okay. was the last Easter yeah. that we had before the pandemic. Yeah. Kind of like this indoor glow party. Yeah. He's going to give a word to He's all of our young people. He's going to well. perform. Yes. It's going to be absolutely amazing. So that'll be at 2 p.m. So 11 a.m. Yes. at the Double Tree on 280. Yeah. All right. Then we're going to come back to Forestdale, 2 p.m. 2 p.m. Yes. for all of our youth, man. So we want you to be a part of that. It's going to be absolutely amazing. 
Uh, we'll do an Easter egg hunt, yeah. all kind of crazy stuff. Pastor Mike will be teaching and performing to our young people. I think that's going to be crazy. All right, now, yeah. Sunday. Yeah, what well, yeah, old Sunday. church say, he stayed there all night Friday. Come on. All night Saturday. Come on. But then early Sunday morning. Oh, yeah. Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. Up. He got up. Yes, sir. And we cannot wait. First at 9 a.m. here at Barsdale. Oh, yeah. An Easter service that you do not want to miss. It's going to be powerful. Also, at 11, we're going to yes, be sir. headed downtown to Absolutely. the Sheraton. Yes, sir. And of course, we'll have our online service as well. If you can't make it here, you can tune in online, online and experience yeah. the presence of God on each Sunday as well. Absolutely. It's going to be absolutely incredible Listen, all weekend. I pray you guys can see that even with the World Games being here, and, and we're so excited about that because now the world gets a chance to see all of the great things yes. that Birmingham has to offer. So we won't be at the Batwell like normal, um, but instead what we're doing is we're working around the clock to make sure that we can create and craft experiences that allow you to come and yes. fill the room and experience the presence of God, man. So listen, guys, I am so excited. Let's go. Pastor James, it's going to be crazy, man. I cannot wait. <laughs> listen, we drained worshiping all day. Yes, I, sir. I just, it was something about today. I just, I'm still on a, on a Holy Ghost high. Full. Man, I am yes, still sir. full, and I'm excited. We know it's going to carry over tomorrow. Absolutely. Devo Energy. Devo, Devo Energy. Energy at 721. We'll be live in the morning. Yes, sir. Live in the morning, 721 a.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, I hope you were blessed. We were blessed. Shout out to our pastor, Pastor Mike Jr., lady, and the entire first family. Oh, yeah for just an incredible, just continuing to lead us. Shout out to you, my brother, Ace J. Man, come on, Hollis, man. Pastor Hollis, yes, man, doing an amazing job, man. We thank God for you. And uh, I'm just excited to work in the kingdom with such powerful people. Yeah, well, listen, in the words of uh, James Fortune, uh, we uh, are not out of word, yeah. but we, we are out of time. Out of time. So <laughs> listen, guys, you stay locked. We'll see you in the morning, 721 a.m. for Devo Energy. Energy. We love you. Y'all be blessed. Peace. Peace.